person feels guilty about something or about everything, <laughs> their whole life is just one big guilt, what would forgiveness feel like? Well, there are a number of levels and layers of forgiveness, just as there are layers and degrees of offense. I guess the forgiveness has to match the offense. You stepped on my lawn. Doesn't take much forgiveness, right? You broke my window. You totaled my car. I mean, now we're getting, now we're getting serious. <laughs> you broke my arm. Different kinds of forgiveness. Right? We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant and uh, kind of community-like. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best. And join us for some enjoyable conversation. So a person can say, I felt very guilty. I felt worthless. And then somebody came along and was nice to me and loved me and put me back on my feet. What happened there? I felt unlovable. And then somebody loved me. So I guess, hey, so I am lovable. That's a form of rebirth, like in uh, the story of Le Rab, John Valjean, somebody loved him. But it goes much deeper than that. Behind every guilt, there's a layer of nihilism. My life is worthless. Not I'm bad. I'm not bad unless I do something bad. But even if I did nothing at all, my life is meaningless, worthless. You love me? That's very pleasant. Doesn't make my life meaningful. I'm still a useless creature that some very kind soul can love. That's not total forgiveness. Total forgiveness means you may have done some things bad, but you're absolutely necessary. And so stop doing bad things and go back to being what you're necessary for. So it's not a matter of good versus bad. It's a question of purposeful or purposeless. Should you exist and be alive, or should you not? A much bigger question than, are you a good boy or a bad boy? Real forgiveness means, no matter how bad you behave, I need you. You're necessary in some way. And then when you do, what you're needed for and what you're necessary for, you become lovable. But just love doesn't really answer the deeper question. Why be at all? So, in the secular world, maybe even in religious circles, good and bad is the entire issue. There are good people, there are bad people. If you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. That's it. That's the whole story. Take it a step deeper. Who is being good and who is being bad? Does that matter? Like, for example, we can be very critical and judgmental. Good people, give them a prize. Bad people, send them to jail. Lock them up. Wait, 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 you're talking about my kids? Whoa, that's a different story. My kid was bad? Well, I got to help him. I got to fix it. My kid shouldn't be bad. So you're identifying the person behind 
the goodness or badness. So good and bad is not the ultimate issue. Although judgmental people treat it that way. And some religions treat it that way. It's all about good and bad. Did you do good? Good. Did you do bad? Who are you talking about? So the Torah says, you are God's creation. He created you purposefully, intentionally, knowing full well what he was doing. So you are born because God needs you in his world. And you're a very bad boy. So what's God going to do? Destroy you? (laughs) He didn't create you to destroy you. So good and bad is only a detail. Two sides, two possibilities. But who are you talking about? And we read this in the Medrash, where we're told that when the Egyptians were drowning by God's decree, the angels began to sing their mourning praises to God. And God said, how could you sing? My creatures are drowning. What does that tell you? They're drowning because they were very bad. There are consequences. But who's drowning? My creatures. Don't sing to me. So there's a significant being who can be good or bad. And and that's the real issue. So if a person feels guilty because of something he did, he also has to know who he is. Who is this sinner? God's creation? Well, then be careful. God's child? Well, be very careful. So real forgiveness means God can be very angry at you for what you did, but he still needs you. Like a parent needs a child. Not for service, psychic need, emotional need. So even if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're still an indispensable being, and I got to see what I can do to get you on the right track so that you live up to your potential. So being told that God loves you doesn't doesn't really get to the core of the issue. Being told that you are still necessary to God's purpose and plan, and that's a that's a much more powerful statement. <clears throat> there are many people who commit suicide and they get a lot of love. Especially after they said they're suicidal. They were bombarded with love. They kill themselves anyway. Because they're not love-starved, they're meaning-starved. They don't feel like their life has meaning. And here's going back to the other topic. Here's where we get confused. It's their existence that has no meaning, but they think their life has no meaning. So instead of ignoring their existence and getting a life, they kill their life, thinking that that's the enemy. It's a mistake. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.